Hi everyone, welcome back. In this chapter, we are going to cover timing checks with respect to clock gating circuits. So friends, if you have not gone through my previous chapter where I discussed various types of clock gating circuits used in VLSI hardware design, I would highly recommend you to first go through that chapter so that it will be very helpful for you to understand the functionality of each and every clock gating circuits and based on that, it would be very easy to decide the timing checks. So now let's get started. So we are going to start with an AND gate based clock gating circuit. So for a AND gate based clock gating circuit, the restrictions on the enable signal is the enable signal should only toggle when the clock is low. That is the restriction. Otherwise, if the enable signal toggles in the time period when the clock signal is high, our clock gated output is going to have some glitch. So in order to prevent any kind of glitch in our clock gated output signal, we have to make sure that our enable signal is toggling only when the clock signal is low. Now, the further restrictions on the enable signal is during the time period when the clock signal is low, in which window the enable signal can toggle. Because if the enable signal toggles near the rising edge of this clock signal, our clock gated output can still be glitchy. Because the clock gated output also depends on the delay, internal delay of these cells. AND gate cell in case of AND gate based clock gating circuit. So here the first restriction on our enable signal is the enable signal should only toggle when the clock signal is low. Now the further restriction on the enable signal is the enable signal should not toggle near the rising and falling edge of the clock signal. So enable signal here can only toggle during this window. It should not toggle during this time and as well as during this time. So there should be some buffer here after the negative edge of the clock and before the positive edge of the clock. In that period, the enable signal should be stable and it should not be toggling. So the time for which the enable signal, signal is stable before the rising edge of the clock is nothing but setup time or the check is nothing but setup check. And the time after the negative edge of the clock for which the enable signal should be stable is our hold time and the check associated with it is hold check. So guys, these are the timing checks with respect to an AND gate based clock gating circuit which we have to make sure that they are meeting the timing requirements. Now let's see the timing check associated with an OR gate based clock gating circuit. So the restrictions on the enable signal for an OR gate based clock gating circuit is it should always toggle whenever the clock is high. If the enable signal toggles when the clock is low, our gated output clock will be glitchy. So the first restriction on the enable signal is the enable signal should only toggle when the clock is high. Now the further restriction is it should not toggle near the rising and falling edge of the clock signal also. So now the enable signal can only toggle in this time period in order to have a glitch free output gated waveform. So the time for which the enable signal should be stable before the negative edge of the clock is nothing but setup time and the check is setup check. And the time for which the enable signal should be stable after the rising edge of the clock is nothing but the hold time and the associated check is hold check. So guys I hope the timing check for an end gate based and and an OR gate based clock gating circuits are clear. Now let's see the timing check for the third type of clock gating circuit which is latch based clock gating circuit. So here we have a negative level sensitive latch. That means whenever the clock signal is high, this latch is basically in the latching state. That means the latch will basically latch the input data. So the input data is going to be latched whenever the clock is high. And whenever the clock signal here is low, our data will be transparent. So whatever the data is an input signal that will be transferring to the output. So if we say here that what is our latching edge for a negative level sensitive latch. So for a negative level sensitive latch, we can say that 
our rising edge of this clock signal is nothing but latching edge because after rising edge for the time the clock signal is high our latch is basically in going, going to be in the latch state so for the negative level sensitive this is our latching edge and now in order to make sure that the latch is basically sampling the input data properly the input data here the enable signal should be stable for some time before this latching edge and in order to make sure that any new data is not going to overwrite the old data quickly the input data should be stable for this much time after the rising edge of this clock signal so our this check is nothing but setup check and this check after the rising edge of the clock is nothing but hold check so these checks are very much similar to the flip flop setup and hold timing check so guys in order to make sure that our clock gating circuit will have a perfect clock gated output signal without any kind of glitch these setup and hold checks needs to be meet the timing requirements so friends i hope the timing checks for all three kind of clock gating circuits are clear to you if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like this video please subscribe this channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as i upload the next video thank you very much